Lord, show me how to love you more than all the things I can't afford. Lord, show me how to just believe you will supply all of my needs. The average person on our planet earns about $2 a day, there, give or take. The richest 10% of our population owns 83% of the wealth, while the bottom 90% of our population owns 17% of the wealth. The wealth is 20% of the households owned 84% of this nation's wealth in 1995, and the bottom 80% of the households owned 16% right here in this country. The richest 1% of Americans have an average net worth of 5.5 million, and the bottom percentage, the bottom percentiles have an average of $2,000. Globally, there are approximately 600 billionaires, 600 billionaires, y'all hear me? 600 billionaires, and 300 of the 600 billionaires are right here in the good old U.S. of A. This, this 600 billionaires constitutes one one hundredth of a percent. The combined wealth of the, the 300 billionaires in America, or 300 of them are in America, accounting for $9 billion, accounting for 10% of this country's gross domestic product. So what I want you to know is, just from that demographic, 600 billionaires, that means there's another six billion people who don't have a billion dollars. Y'all hear me now? I, I don't know if you're hearing me. Six, there are six billion people who don't have a billion dollars, all right, and there are 600 people who do. Now, now, but in spite of corporate earnings, record corporate earnings, and advancement in individual income and, and marked improvements in material well-being all around us, there has been no marked change around this country and around this planet amongst people who describe themselves as happy. Look at your neighbor and ask him, are you happy? Y'all got to wake up with me now. Okay, are you happy? Now, now, now Bill and Melinda Gates are happy. Happy. They, happy. they should be happy folk. They, they, they have assets worth more than 44% of American families' assets combined. Bill, just Bill and Melinda Gates have more percent of the people in this country. Now, now, now when we think about that, 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 that perspective, we think about Bill and Melinda Gates and all the money they have. I heard Bishop Noel Jones say several weeks ago in Dallas, you, Bill, Gates, Melinda Gates, and Oprah Winfrey all have something in common. You didn't know that, did you? Somebody saying, oh, man, what do I have in common with Bill, Oprah, and Melinda? Well, you, Bill Gates, and Oprah Winfrey have one thing in common, and that is you were born naked. Oh, you're going to get that on the way home. All right, yeah. You've got something in common with Bill Gates, Melinda Gates, and Oprah Winfrey. And that one thing in common is that you were born naked. Now, now if I could push that thought just, just, just a little, little more. The difference between you, Bill Gates, and Oprah is just this one simple fact. It's what you do with the gift God gives you when he created you. Amen? Oh, man, just think about it. Right now, you have the potential of Bill Gates and Oprah Winfrey because you all, all started at the same place. How many college grads in the room? All college grads, raise your hand. Check this out. Bill Gates didn't finish college. All right? You know, when we think about the, 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 the odds and the circumstances and the stuff against us and around us, and then we're reminded that, man, we do have something in common with these folks. But check this out. If I could push it a little further. The other thing that you and Bill and Oprah have in common is that one day you are going to die. I don't care how much money Bill Gates got. One day Bill Gates is going to be standing face to face with his maker saying, man, I wish I could give you a couple of these billions for a couple of more years. You know what I'm talking about? But, but in the midst of this, we realize that, that the question that this young man asked Jesus is the question that should be on each and every one of our hearts <clears throat> regardless of how many assets we have or how many assets we don't have. And the question is, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? I'm going to tell you all, 76 years, that's how long my daddy lived. 76 years is not a lot of time. 
when, when I think about the fact that, that 76 years was, was, was all the time that he had, and, and if we are really healthy and we're really doing the right thing and, and we make it to 100, all your friends going to be dead anyway, all right? So, so there has to be more to this life than what we can do in 100 years. That's what Jesus was talking about. He's talking about eternal significance. There is more to this life. There's more to this life than, than we can do right now. There's more to this life than we, we can acquire right now. And, and in this moment, we, re we, we realize <clears throat> that something should happen in our minds, in our, in our lives. Thank you. That something should happen when, when we realize that, 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 that we can, regardless of what we do have and don't have, we cannot purchase another day on earth. Something happens when we realize that our jobs won't elevate our joy levels in our lives. And we also realize that, that, that our earthly relationships will have no bearing on our, earth, uh, on our eternal significance. You can know President Bush and it will not buy you any extra time. We're going somewhere. We know from Jesus' response that this, this man was wealthy. Yeah, he looked at him and, and he could tell from looking at him that, that there was something there was something about this brother. It might have been the Prada tunic or the, the Donald Plyner sandals or, or, or maybe it was, it was that Jesus knew this brother would say cash rules everything around me. But today we do, we do something that we don't have and, and don't have the same capability as Jesus and that is we make assumptions based on what we see. We, we, we look at people and we, 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 we make a determination that, that, that because of what they are wearing or because of what they are driving, we, we know who they are. But the reality is most folk are fronting. <laughs> Buying things they don't need to impress people they don't know, ending up with bills they can't pay and stress they can't get rid of. <laughs> See, when we really think about this, this, this brother had earned his wealth through honorable means, otherwise we, we would have seen it in scripture. There, there was no indication that, that he had stolen the money from unsuspecting stockholders, that there's, there's no evidence that, to believe that, that, that he was involved in any money laundering schemes, there, that it appears to be no signs that he, he, he engaged in identity theft of any sort, and it doesn't seem as though, though anybody was getting high as a result of this brother's enterprise. As a matter of fact, when Jesus looked at this man, he said, you, have, you, you know the commandments, you, you do not murder, you do not commit adultery, you don't steal, you don't, you don't lie, you don't defraud, you don't, and you honor your mother and your father. But, but, but really, if we look at this guy, in spite of having everything together on the outside, there was something happening on the inside that was plaguing his life, and that, and that inside plague was, what am I going to do with the rest of my life beyond the point I can see, touch, and feel right now? And that's the question that has to be on each and every one of our lives. What am I going to do? Now, the word says Jesus looked at this man, and, and in spite of his question, in spite of, in spite of what was plaguing his mind and his life in that moment, Jesus looked at him and loved him. Now, 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 now what, what happens when we, when we normally see people, we go back to this earlier point, when we normally see people, that we, we're seeing them through, through what one psychologist called the Johari's window through one of four windows that, that, that we allow or are allowed to see into other people's life. In the first window, that's how I see me. If you, if you, can, if you can imagine four windows, and one of those window panes being, being the, the, the how I see me, and if I look through that window, that's how I look to me. And, and that's normally the, 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 the person or the image uh, uh, that we, in, in which we lie to ourselves about ourselves. And, and then there's a second, there's a second, that's how others see me. And, 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 and the reality is, and, and in the book you'll see that there, there, there's an there, there's a expectation when we normally look at people and, and those expectations set us up normally to resent that person a little later on when they don't meet our expectations. Am I right about that, church? Have you ever expected a person to do something or to be a certain way or, or to respond to you in a certain way? And when they didn't respond to you in that certain way, you, still, you, hate, you hated them? You couldn't stand them because they didn't do what, you, what, what they thought you would do when they, when they first uh, encountered you in that moment. And then the third window is how I want to be seen. And how I want to be seen is, is, is typically uh, the, the, the mask that, we, that we, we, we put on to keep folk from really seeing who we really are, to keep folk from seeing our real pain, to keep folk from seeing our real scars, to keep folk from seeing what we have really been through. So that, that's the, and then the fourth is how God sees me. And I'm so glad that God sees me differently than people see me. Amen. 
Hallelujah. See, when God sees me, he, he, he doesn't look in this moment right now. And when Jesus saw this young man, he wasn't looking in this young man's right now. He, he was looking at this, this young man's eternity. 